So, mounting hard drives. I know you guys may have been thinking something else, but what is mounting a hard drive? No, it's not throwing your leg over it and riding it like a horse. No, it's actually a term that's used quite frequently in the Linux community because, well, it's something you do all the time. In fact, actually, if you have multiple drives, well, you're gonna need to mount, particularly in Ubuntu. And today we're gonna be specifically talking about Pop! OS, but yeah, let's talk about mounting hard drives right after the intro. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie and you are watching Greater Than Pi. So mounting, what is it? Well, much like how Windows has its own variation of disk management, mounting is important to Linux when it comes to addressing multiple hard drives. You see, once you've installed your operating system, that one drive automatically mounts, but if you want another one in your system, you're gonna have to mount it first. And it actually gets treated a fair bit differently than Windows. In Windows, when you have multiple hard drives, each drive has its very own drive directory. But on Linux, it actually doesn't. It's really weird. Linux requires something called a mount point to address that drive. And that mount point is stored within your main install of the operating system. This is an important distinction between Windows and Linux because once we start actually doing things on our second drive, we need to be able to address it properly with various pieces of software within Linux, which can only happen if it properly has a mount point. That being said, setting up a mount is super easy and I can even show you how to set one up in a custom location at the same time because again, it's not that difficult. It's just a difference in terminology. So let's actually get into the tutorial of this thing because once we get past here, we'll start the creative things you can do with it. First, you're gonna need to install a second drive into your system. I personally have a ton of hard drives in all of my systems, but my gaming configurations are an SSD and a hard drive. And I do that for both operating systems. So I have four drives in the system at a given time. That being said, you can name these drives in the operating system and they will address them as that name in both Windows and Linux, which is kind of awesome. I didn't know that they did that when I first started this journey. All you're gonna need to do, slap a hard drive right into your system, power it using SATA uh, power and uh, data SATA into the motherboard, just like any other hard drive install. After that's in, all you're gonna have to do is actually format and map the drive, which you can do quite easily. All you need to do is press the super key, which is also the Windows key on your keyboard. If you've got a normal Windows key keyboard instead of one like mine that actually says uh, command, I think. <laughs> oh no, it says Windows. <laughs> it says Windows. I have something to say code. Point is, um, you're gonna press the Windows key, which is also addressed as the super key in Linux. And then you're just gonna type in disk. Now this is specifically to Pop! OS because, well, it's the one that I use, but uh, <laughs> now these principles are being applied to Pop! OS, but they do reflect somewhat in Ubuntu, uh, but this is specifically going to be for Pop for the most part. <laughs> now that we have the disk management tool open, which I'm going by the Windows name, it's actually just called disk on Linux here. You'll actually see all of your drives and you can, format these drives, create new partitions, see the health of these drives. It's actually a very useful tool, by the way, and mount the drives, which is actually indicated by this little like playhead looking thing. Now, by default, you can actually just hit that and it will mount it to a location in Linux, which is awesome. And if you actually look right down over in this little bottom corner here, you'll actually see that it tells you where it's mounted. That is your mount point. You're done. I mean, you just need to make sure you know where that mount point is so that if you want to attach it to say Steam, you can navigate to that mount point and select it to be your alternate download point. And if you just navigate to there by default, you can actually enter that drive from that location. You'll also notice on Pop! OS that it also puts it at the bottom of your screen uh, right there on your toolbar. It's just a useful way to get to the drive if you needed to, but I hear you. That's not really convenient because I don't have to go through folders and stuff and find this thing. Well, there is a way to create a custom mount point and it's actually fairly simple. Simply create a new folder on your desktop. And from there, you just want to hit, you want to hit control L, which will actually select that location. And then you want to hit control C, copy that, go back into your disk management, 
where you have your mount options, which is represented by these two gears, click that, and then you can select to user customize settings. And where you see mount point, you just change that to your new mount point. There you go, restart, and it should be mounted at that location. Now I have had some iffiness happen though with this, unfortunately. Uh, sometimes the drives don't like to mount to another location. And there you go, you're set up. You've got now a folder right on your desktop. You'll notice though that Linux doesn't have the term shortcut used anywhere. Unlike in Windows where you can create shortcuts to various drives or various folders, Linux just doesn't do it. <laughs> it uses these mount points to work as shortcuts, which is actually a key difference that you have to know about when actually implementing things in Linux. But let's talk about why you need to know this before setting up your gaming PC for Linux. Well, it comes from the one SSD, one HHD rule. You know, that, that little thing that every builder has told you to do since the dawn of time. There's a couple of reasons for this. One, drives can get overloaded. SATA interfaces can get overloaded. And more importantly, uh, well, SSDs aren't perfect. Hard drives are great for large amounts of storage for less money. And that's the entire reason you would buy one. So by having a two drive system, one SSD and one HHD, you can sort of just combine the two benefits of them and have little downside. That being said, if you are looking at doing something like this in your system, I have a video coming out very soon taking a look at a gaming hard drive that might or might not actually be better. Hint, hint. But that, <laughs> with that being said, uh, understanding just the subtle differences between Linux and Windows will actually help you transition into actually understanding some of the power features. I've been a Windows power user for God knows how long, and because of that, like things like disk management and disk management tools and having multiple drives, multiple drive letters and addresses is second nature to me. And I really wanted to make this to try to make that transition a little bit easier for all of you guys, because I unfortunately, while I was testing these gaming hard drives, this isn't one of them, by the way, I had to do a lot of this stuff a lot. <laughs> and unfortunately, because I had to do it so much, I learned very quickly the differences between Linux and Windows when it comes to these types of things. But that's where we're gonna end it today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, leave it a like, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna continue making awesome content involving Linux gaming and PC gaming in general. Uh, we've got a build coming up very soon. That is my dual booted gaming PC build, which will have a configuration of one SSD per operating system and two hard drives of a specific type. We'll talk about that a little bit more on our gaming hard drive video. But uh, we've got a build coming up. It's gonna be our end of year video. Um, I haven't really decided on the case. In fact, actually, I'm gonna leave a poll. And we're gonna leave it open for a couple weeks on which case I'm going to do. I'm debating between the Lee and Lee O11 Dynamic Mini with a full ATX motherboard in it, or the Fractal Design Torrent. So please let me know which one you would like to see either in the description or in the poll. I'm gonna to try to post the poll on the community tab, but uh, yes, I am honestly like, I I'm looking forward to actually doing a build this year. I'm excited for it. But that's where we're gonna end today, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave it a like, and I uh, will see you in the next one. Wolfie out.